Good evening and welcome to Old Time Taunton. I am your host, Charlie Crowley, and tonight, like every week, we hope to talk about our community and generate a greater amount of interest and enthusiasm in our city and, and hopefully a greater appreciation. That is our goal here, uh, as it has been every week since, uh, let me see, uh, July of 1998. We're live here tonight, uh, the second day of January 2013. Uh, and tonight we're going to have a special program on School Street, uh, starting at the very beginning of School Street and going up to Braga Square and to the village. Uh, so hopefully there'll be some photographs here tonight that are, will uh, stir a memory of yours, and, and, uh, and I hope during the course of the next hour that you'll uh, call up here and, and let us know exactly uh, what you think about uh, the growing up in the School Street area, the Braga School area. Uh, the number here is 774-501-1756. That's all it takes here. If you have a private line, just dial star 82 before, uh, and then uh, that little uh, number will appear in a little screen in front of me, uh, and uh, then I'll pick up the phone. Otherwise, I won't pick it up. So you could call all, at, all, all night long. I, I will not pick it up unless you do that. And I'll erase it afterwards, so I'm not saving those numbers. Uh, but to, just to protect us from any crazy calls. Uh, but uh, tonight, uh, Braga Square, a school street area, uh, originally school street, uh, and I'm going to show you a, a, one of the oldest pictures of it at, at the beginning, uh, and it is uh, an area, this was taken in the uh, very early, to, uh, late 1770s, early 1880s, uh, and that's the White and Child Company right at the corner of school street, and, but at that time it was called Fayette Street. Uh, the, in the early days, there were very few streets that went north of, of Main Street uh, uh, prior to the American Revolution. Uh, and so that this, this particular street uh, just led to an area that it was pretty much a forest and, and fields and very few houses uh, in the northern part of, the, of what we later would know as School Street. But the White and Child Company uh, was there until about 1883. And then the uh, uh, the this is the Cobb, Bates, and Yorks Company. Uh, and this, uh, they constructed this building about 1883, and it was there up until the 1940s, and when uh, actually is where H.L. Green moved into this building, because Cobb, Bates downsized to move across the street, uh, and H.L. Green moved into this, and then it burned. And then they tore it down and put up the H.L. Green store that we know and love. Uh, but uh, Cobb Bates was an interesting store in that uh, you could shop there for years without ever going inside because what they would do is they would come through your neighborhood and get your order, and then uh, a few days later they'd bring back, or later that day, would bring back your order. So you could actually uh, trade with them without ever having to, uh, to actually set foot inside the store. So if you have any questions about as we go up School Street, uh, maybe uh, shops that used to be along there, maybe you grew up, went to school in the, in the fuller school that we see behind me, uh, you can hardly see it, but we'll, we'll show a better picture of that uh, in a little while. As we go up all along, uh, talking about some of the, uh, the people and everything that went there, I do have some pictures at the end of this program that uh, of some of the famous people that came out of the School Street area, uh, and perhaps you can nominate uh, some of your own, uh, a, a story behind a lot of people up in uh, the area. So uh, just give us a call. Uh, w this uh, picture here shows the, the tearing down that, this building after the fire, and Walter Barker was the construction company, and it put up the H.L. Green building. And this is famous because of uh, a lot of the cheap uh, products that they had in there. But they, when you walked in, at least when I recall going inside, it had these beautiful uh, uh, images on the wall of, of Taunton in its heyday 
huge, huge murals on the wall. Uh, and actually, we've got a couple of those. When this building was taken down, they were brought to the high school. And uh, they, during the renovation project, those were returned to me when I was the mayor. And uh, they were at last, I saw them at the Maxim School, the temporary city hall. Uh, we were uh, going to mount them on the wall, but I don't believe they were, it was ever done yet. Uh, but they, that's where they're located. Uh, perhaps you remember going into these stores. This is the H.L. Green in the Garb Shop next door. Uh, just give us a call, 774-501-1756. That's all it takes to, to join us here to, uh, tonight. We're live here from our studios. This is Old Time Taunton. I'm Charlie Crowley, a volunteer to do this for over 300 episodes since 1998. And I hope that you uh, volunteer to call up here tonight. And, uh, and tell us what you know about the School Street neighborhood. But that picture here with H.L. Green's was taken down in the 1970s. Uh, that's what came up in its place, the Durf, what was the Durfee Trust Bank. Uh, and this was there for many years. It later uh, was the, uh, the, uh, the volunteer. Uh, there's probably a number of different things that it's been over the years. But I remember it was a uh, uh, recently a volunteer uh, organization owned it. And it's also where... Uh, the current mayor had his election headquarters in that building. Uh, but I wanted to show you this, is they had a lot of street railway signs in the, uh, I mean, uh, street railway lines going in all throughout the community. So, uh, so a century ago in the School Street area, they did have a line that went up School Street. Uh, you could see it just slightly uh, right of center. It went up School Street and then it went down uh, all the way up to Thrasher Street and then, uh, then came around. So it was, uh, they did have public transportation and there would be a, a turnabout, or not a turnout, a turnout right around near the Fuller School is where they had a double track so that the uh, vehicles could pass one another in that particular neighborhood. But they, most of those trolleys went out uh, in the 1930s. And you can see the trolley tracks going up the center of School Street in this particular picture. The building to the right would be where the, uh, uh, the beauty salon is today, but that was a bicycle shop uh, all along the, where those two gabled bu buildings are. And that's where you, I think it's, or it was recently the King and Queen, uh, Alfred's King and Queen restaurant, the Dragon Lady uh, restaurant uh, was there, uh, the Oriental restaurant. Uh, was there, and then you're looking down, this would be around 1939, because there was a campaign sign in the far building that says Poole, and that was for Mayor Poole, who was mayor at the time uh, in the late 30s, right up until 1940. But per uh, perhaps you remember some of the stores along uh, School Street, just give us a buzz. I'll try to give a close-up, you have barber shops there, uh, the, uh, uh, and you also had uh, uh, the Mary Parker House uh, in this area also had uh, Kay's Townhouse was here, run by the Lombardi family, uh, was here for many years, but the Witherells used to run the Mary Parker House. This is the bicycles, the Taunton Bicycle Company uh, here, and that is the area right near before you'd get down to where the Bugle Buick used to be or the uh, School Street Apartments. But as you can see, the Utica Club uh, and you can see the, uh, the Parker House, as they called it, uh, on the right. And then you can see the pool headquarters. And that would be right where the pool sign would be where the former king and queen uh, uh, restaurant where had the famous pizza place. Now, you've got to answer this question for anybody watching here tonight. If you went into the old king and queen restaurant they, and you walked straight ahead to the cash register, there was a sign behind the cashier on the wall that you could see. Can you tell me exactly what that said? Not verbatim, but what were the gist of it was. There was a particular statement they said on that sign at the King and Queen restaurant. If you have, know the answer, give us a call here. 774-501-1756. We're live here tonight. We're talking about School Street, and we're going to get up to the Braga Square area, talk about Tony Braga, uh, the gentleman for whom the square is named after, after we'll talk about him. And if you know him, if you grew up with him, uh, let us know because we'd like to, uh, to hear your vantage point 
on uh, growing up in the School Street era. And somebody's decided to join us. You're next in Old Time Taunton. Hi, Charlie. How you doing? Good, good. How are you? That's the school, uh, full of school, right? The full of school is right behind me here. Right. Did you go there? That was my old uh, homestead. Really? What, uh, when you grew, went there, who were some of the teachers there when you were there? Well, we had uh, Miss Hoy. Okay. Miss Coleman. Mm -hmm. The principal was uh, Sophie Dupont. Uh huh. And uh, that's uh, all I can remember. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that uh, the people are watching, uh, will, it'll trigger a memory for them, and they'll talk about that. But right. what was your favorite memory going to Fuller School? Well, all I had to do was jump the fence, and I was in the schoolyard. Yeah. It was so close. Did you have to go across the street to Jibo's? Uh... No, I don't remember that. That was before my time. Before, you, before your time, yeah. Yeah. We had the PHAC across the street. Sure. And uh, Cirrus' uh, market. Sure, Okay. They owned a bar room down on Court Street there mm -hmm. uh, later on in, uh, in life. Oh, and uh, let's see. Yeah, from uh, Fuller School, we went to uh, Kohanet School. Right, yeah, because most of those schools did the primary schools. But even before uh, Kohanet School was a middle school, before that concept came into reality. Right. Uh, and uh, because uh, Fuller School closed when Elizabeth Pohl School was um, right. uh, and was opened. Right now, that's a driveway into Abra Oil there. That's right, Abra, they, that's what they it is. They bought the property from the city. Right. Well, yeah. great. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah. Okay, John. Thank, thank you. I was looking for it last week. You said you were going to have it last week. Right. I, I was going to do it last week. Unfortunately, I had uh, my aunt uh, died, the matriarch of the oh, family. Oh, I'm sorry so I had to, a, yeah. had to attend a, a funeral out of town. So, sure. uh, And it was at the last minute. So. Yeah. Okay, um, Charlie. Thank you. Bye. And I mentioned right here where the uh, Utica Club is. We show that that's where it was Kay's townhouse. So during, when it was Kay's Townhouse back in the uh, uh, early 80s, uh, we had a girls uh, softball team played in the, lo in the local league, and I was the coach. So this, this, that's me standing in the background with a beard. I actually had hair on the top of my head uh, back then. But uh, some of these uh, people here, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if I can remember everyone's name. In the back, back row uh, at the far left is my sister-in-law, Mary Crowley. Uh, the front, in front of her is Dottie Spencer, had, uh, let me see, Menard, Stacy Menard, Carol Machado's in there, Kim Robinson, uh, let me see, uh, uh, Donna Martin, uh, Paula Costa, some of the ones that are in, the, in this picture, but they played in the league in the early 80s because I coached the girls softball team for several years, including the brass button uh, in the 80s. But this is the Alfred's King and Queen would be right uh, just before you get to the uh, to Kay's townhouse, uh, and, uh, and now I believe, or in recent years, it was the Dragon Lady uh, 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 restaurant. There, perhaps you remember going in uh, to these places, uh, because King and Queen, the older building, was abandoned uh, for many, many years. This building, that's where the King and Queen originally was located in Taunton. And I believe the cook who made that special recipe pizza went down to the Hideaway restaurant in Middleborough, and later it was at Dewey's uh, restaurant in Lakeville as well. And you can see Duval Printing was in the old, uh, um, uh, what was Robinson's later, uh, uh, Costello Buick and Bugle Buick. And now Duval Printing is up at the old, uh, where the highway market is on Route 44, where the highway market used used to be, I should say. But this is the School Street Apartments uh, building when it was the Bugle Buick. It was a parking garage, basically, and uh, for that outlet. But just to give you an idea, that it was originally the Robinson's Motor Car Company, and they'd have their band, they'd do anything for attention here, and that's there, I believe, in, the, in front of the courthouse uh, where this particular picture was taken. But uh, they're displaying their automobiles. This is in front of the old city hall. Oh, in the background is the, I believe, the first parish church. Uh, but perhaps you remember the car, the car dealership that was there, either Bugle Buick or Costello Buick.
but this is the School Street Apartments before the current building was put up uh, where um, Robinson's Motor Car Company. And if you looked from the top of the School Street Apartments or Robinson's looking north, that's what you'd see sort of the School Street School. It's now where the Board of Health is, uh, but it is it was where uh, it was originally the School Street School or the lower School Street School because the original Fuller School was the North School Street School. But if we went across the street where the parking deck is, this is what you'd look at. This is when there was a gas station there where, where the parking deck is now, or the bank. It's the, uh, the beginning part of it. We drive into the bank parking lot. If you were standing at uh, coming out the door of the School Street Apartments and look straight across the street, that's what you would see. The gas station uh, there and mechanic shop that you can see. All of this was taken down uh, years when they made a uh, parking lot out of that back in the 1950s. But this is a Tidal, a Tidal uh, fill-in station, as they were called years ago. But they put in a, um, a large parking lot there in the 1950s, but this construction project is when the, in preparation of them putting up the parking deck. So what they're doing in this particular picture is knocking down the rear section of what we remember as the Big Z. And that's, you see, an aerial picture of that shows the, uh, the parking area where the parking deck is now. In the lower right is the uh, central fire station. Uh, upper part is the Jones block. And the, uh, over to the top left is the back part of the former Big Z that was taken. Uh, and they can shows you the construction of the current parking deck. It was originally built to have additional levels. It has one, uh, it has two levels. It was built so that you could put another level on the deck, although that has been discussed but never realized so far. This central fire station is the oldest active, continuously operated fire station in the country. There are older fire stations in the country that, that were built as a fire station, but they closed. And even in Taunton, we have uh, the uh, Betty's, what was Betty's Flower Shop, just right next door to the uh, Westfield Church, was an old fire station. And the JC's building in Oakland on North Walker Street was a fire station before this. Uh, but they closed. This one is still operating, and it opened for service August of 1869, and it's been a fire station, an operating fire station ever since. It shows you some of the firemen. They would collect toys for needy kids, uh, something that was very, very common uh, by not just the people at the central fire station, but uh, all over town, and they still do a lot of good things for the city. This was on election day when the fire station was a polling spot in, eight, in 1948. So they pulled all the vehicles out so they could set up the booths in the uh, central fire station. Uh, this was the original central fire station that was over on High Street. Uh, and this became um, a Veterans Firemen's Association building and later, later Carlos's Cafe. But this closed once the, this building opened. But that's, what, that's the original uh, central fire station in Taunton, that what used to be on the old high street opposite the depot. And that's, of course, the, uh, the, the fire station. And then across the street was the School Street School uh, that operated for many years. And then, of course, I believe it was in the 50s or 60s that it closed. Uh, and a lot of these smaller schools were, uh, were uh, replaced by the Pole, what was the pole school, and of course up in Oakland you, uh, you had the uh, Bennett School that was built. Now if you look from the fire station and you look up Leonard Street towards the theaters, this is what you'd see now on the right would be the parking lot for the uh, Bristol County Savings Bank, but you had Highlands Fish Market was there, Galligan's Diner used to be located there, but it looks altogether different. You'd be looking right at the courthouse today. Also on Leonard Street was, uh, on the site of the parking deck, was uh, Wilkins Garage at one time. And this was later Ace Nichols uh, Bar Room. But this was, when it was a garage, it was Wilkins at one time. And all of this was destroyed when they put up the, uh, the uh, 
when it made cleared it to make the original parking area. And you can see in the background above the truck, you see a little tower sticking up. There used to be a training tower for the fire department where they would practice and they would do their drills in, right in back of the central fire station, right in that spot. And they would climb that tower and do all their maneuvers. This is all the area where the parking deck is. It was originally stables for the Jesse Smith uh, um, stagecoach line. And uh, this, this road that you see there, the, or the alley, actually comes out right uh, near, at the beginning of Broadway, where Mulhern's used to be, and Olson's Flowers. Uh, so, but that, all this was taken down when they, uh, when they uh, uh, put up the parking area. Then across from Wilkins' garage was the Galligan's Diner. And uh, uh, this would, originally was mobile, and it would go onto the Taunton Green like a lunch cart. It would be pulled out either by a truck or by a horse. And, late, and during the day, they'd be located here. But then at this time, uh, later in its life existence, they actually it became a permanent structure. And that's what it looks like inside, looked like inside, I should say. Uh, also in that general area, in, in the lower part of School Street area, this is on Fayette Street. This was Trescott Tisdale's house. Uh, and actually, the driveway for this house was Trescott Street. It was named for the first name of Mr. Tisdale, Trescott Tisdale. And uh, now it's completely surrounded by, uh, by houses. That, so you really can't appreciate the splendor of this particular house. But that's w what it looks like uh, in recent years. Also over in, in the lower area near, near School Street was Lee Terrace. Uh, is the, uh, he was killed in action. There's what he looked like. Some of the heroes of uh, uh, killed in Vietnam. But, uh, this was also um, in the area of uh, Trescott Street is the Eagles Club. This was where the Trescott Street um, parking lot is, across from Dooley's or L the Boomerang or Lombardi's. Uh, the Eagles Club, and, I, and it's significant in that this is also Gaffney's Casino was here, where they used to show westerns and you'd leave canned goods at the, um, when you'd come and you'd leave canned goods and that would be a price of admission. But it's also the Eagles Club is where they held the first mass for at St. Anthony's Church uh, when Father Laura was appointed as the first pastor uh, to create the, the parish of St. Anthony's before they, they secured and built their basement structure on School Street. It, they originally were going to build a church on uh, the Perkins Estate which was actually on uh, Ware Street, at the, uh, near the corner of Harrison Street. And, uh, but they were, it was too distant from where they, uh, the, the, the population of Portuguese that they wanted to serve by St. Anthony Parish, so they chose to uh, look at a site up on School Street. This is the uh, American Legion that's in a, a state of disrepair uh, now, but originally it was the Cedar Street Chapel and later became the Historical Society. And uh, the Old Colony Historical Society was located here until 1926 when they moved into the former Bristol Academy. And as you can see, as uh, there will be a lot of activity at the American Legion building as they're preparing for the 1889 250th anniversary parade. That's Phil, uh, what was uh, um, Eddie Brennan's office right across from City Hall at the corner of of uh, Union Street. This was the Winthrop Club where the first bowling alley in the city was located. And that's what it was there before. Uh, it was also the Union Fire uh, House, this building where it says the cash grocery store. Uh, that was a fire station. And the building to the right still exists. It was moved over to Grant Street. And that's the, uh, I'm not sure if it's 58, I'm not sure the exact number, but it's right on near the bend in the road on, on uh, Grant Street. That used to face City Hall. On Dean Street Station, that is the, uh, uh, the, where the Boston train used to come down and as well as the circus train came down. It was also the office in a Nabisco company. Goff's Masonry was here, and now it's the Taunton Retirement Board. And that's the original station in that area. But now we get up to School Street, uh, the, uh, back to School Street. This was the uh, St. Anthony's Church 
uh, as it was for many years, from around 1905 up to the 1950s. They were located in the basement. They built the basement in hopes of eventually building the church on top of this. This is right where the St. Anthony's School was for many years. And, um, and the, the St. Anthony's Church now is on the other side of the house that's there uh, that you're looking at on this picture. But this was, the, for many years, what everyone in the neighborhood knew as St. Anthony's Church. And it was uh, started about 1905, because there were a lot of Portuguese families in the, in the community. Uh, many lived in East Taunton, some down the Ware Village, who came to Taunton for economic opportunity. Uh, but the bishop uh, had uh, selected Reverend Alexandro Luro, uh, uh, who had been stationed down in Provincetown, to come up to, uh, to uh, serve as the first pastor of the newly created St. Anthony's Parish. So around 1905, is when the parish when it uh, started. So he served uh, right up until about 22 years, about up until around 1927, uh, when uh, eventually he was replaced by uh, Reverend Manuel Kudo, uh, who served up until uh, uh, Monsignor Tixera. Uh, I think it's I think it was Alexander Tixera took over after him, and and Alexander Tixera, who I don't have a picture of, was the one who actually. Uh, spearheaded the effort to build the what we know now as the St. Anthony's uh, Church. And that's what it looked like in the basement church, the church you saw before. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, what they did is, as they were built, this was being renovated as the school. It would be later uh, have the St. Anthony's School put on the foundation of what was originally the foundation for or the the walls of the St. Anthony's Church. So this is when they were uh, building it, but that's the St. Anthony's School being built. And that's what it looked like after it was built, but that's on the site of the original St. Anthony's uh, Church. Perhaps you went to school there, you want to give us a, uh, a, a call, 774-501-1756, uh, that's all it takes to uh, uh, tell us your memories of growing up in a school street in the village, in the Braga Square area. Maybe you went to St. Anthony's Church. Uh, maybe you went to St. Anthony's School. Uh, maybe you went to Fuller School. Uh, but this is the uh, dedication ceremony. That is the, uh, the St. Anthony's School that uh, up until the fire, this is probably about 20 years ago that the fire took place. Uh, and there it is on fire, the St. Anthony's School. A lot of memories went with that. And that's the charred remains of of what was the St. Anthony's School. But this is the St. Anthony's Church that uh, actually ground was broken around 1950 uh, for this, uh, this church. And uh, beautiful, beautiful church. And as you can see, it, um, it was uh, something that was uh, the pride of anyone growing up in the School Street area. Father Lura, uh, it had uh, dominated here for many years, and that's what the original interior of the church looked like at St. Anthony's. And the church it was dedicated on July 29th, 1951. I don't know if you were there. Perhaps you can tell us about it. Uh, maybe you were uh, at the wedding, the very first wedding that took place here on August 25th, 1951, uh, by the wedding uh, of Natalie and Bento Correa, uh, Carrera at the... Uh, at the newly constructed St. Anthony's Church. But over the years, uh, some of these uh, photographs that took place, maybe you recognize someone in the picture, want to give us a call, 774-501-1756. Uh, there's uh, uh, also in this picture was, I believe, um, uh, John Gonzales, the father of Jack uh, Gonzales from the Jack de Johns, who was a, a noted realtor, but also a, a longtime city councilor in town. Uh, but this was some of the uh, uh, the choir at the church, the altar boys from 1960. Maybe you're in the picture, or you want to uh, let us know who some of the others, your colleagues are. Maybe you recognize your family member in this picture. Uh, this is all growing up in in the School Street area. Perhaps you remember some of these. Your parents, your grandparents, is Father Laura in the in the picture here. 
But this is the first communion uh, action in 1937 at the St. Anthony's Parish. I'll leave it up there for a little bit. Perhaps you uh, have family members that you know were in that particular picture. Uh, grandparents, parents, uh, or maybe yourself in the, in the picture. The Holy Name Society in September of 1929, uh, their first annual banquet. Uh, the Holy Name Society, and that was in September of that year. Uh, but you can't, you can't hardly pick anyone out in that particular picture. But this is, I believe, near the blocks. There were two blocks, uh, two buildings known as the blocks, one near the Fuller School and one right at the corner and, uh, that's no, across from the bakery. But having the uh, picnic grounds, once the uh, St. Anthony's Church property was acquired, they, uh, over the years they acquired additional property so they could have the, uh, the festival grounds. Uh, so that there was a lot of festivals that, were, that took place behind the church. The, this particular, uh, or these pictures, are from the 1990s. Perhaps you uh, remember some of them uh, and want to give us a call here, 774-501-1756. My name is Charlie Crowley. We're talking live here tonight about the School Street area, Braga uh, Square area. Who were some of the famous people that came out of the Braga Square area? What was your favorite uh, activity? Maybe you know some of the uh, uh, teachers that taught at the Fuller School. Uh, we're going to be showing that in a little bit, along with some of the stores that, uh, that uh, were located in the School Street area. Perhaps you have your favorite uh, uh, memory of the School Street area. Uh, this is a, a Fuller Dolphin Estate, uh, right across from St. Anthony's. It was built in 1872. Uh, and that is Dr. Uh, 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 Dolphin, Henry Dolphin, who lived there. But it was originally the home of Judge Fuller, for whom the Fuller School is named after. Uh, but it, it was a large estate, and now the Thomas Apartments have, uh, uh, were built around it. So some of the outbuildings were taken down, but the structure itself is still there, the main, main house. But 187 School Street is the site of uh, Jibos Variety Store. Uh, and there it is inside, Dominic and Mary Jibo with Mary Lynch. Perhaps you remember this store, your parents, something your parents talked about uh, when you share your memories of growing up in the School Street area. Uh, there's uh, not a lot of different stores in the area. A lot of times they'd say there wouldn't be a store in every corner because when you built up credit at one store and you didn't have the money to pay it off, you'd go to the next store. And uh, not just in this neighborhood, but uh, that's what I've been told by a number of people that grew up in some of these neighborhoods where they had a, a little variety store in every corner. This is the, uh, the Portuguese American Civic Club and like the St. Anthony's Church, for many years, I believe up until the 1960s, it operated in just what was the basement uh, of the building, and they only put the, the upper floor on it, I believe, in the early 60s. But correct me if I'm wrong, if you know differently, and you've been a longtime member of the Portuguese American Civic Club, uh, uh, tell us about some of their activities. Uh, what were the best things that happened at the Portuguese American Civic Club in, in Taunton? Uh, and because a lot of times what they did is they organized uh, to become more involved in the community, uh, educate the, the newly arrived uh, Portuguese families because School Street area had been predominantly Irish uh, families that lived in the area and they really got pushed out once the Portuguese families came in uh, and the, uh, the, some of the Irish families moved elsewhere. But uh, originally when the Portuguese families came here they needed to find out exactly how to get the best services that were available and they needed to learn how to vote. And they became a, a very powerful a group uh, of uh, uh, people when it came time for election time. And there were a number of different people like uh, Frank Rico, uh, obviously Ted, Ted Alexo, uh, Joe Amaral, uh, Rudy De Silva, uh, a number of, pr uh, of course, Bob Noons, I should say, but he really wasn't, uh, Bob Noons wasn't really tied into the School Street area. <clears throat> but uh, the Portuguese uh, uh, families became very, very powerful entity within the community uh, and uh, uh, with the help of some of the people I just mentioned. Uh, this is the PACC and the, the Twilight League in Taunton. 
uh, Reed and Barton and some of the groups, uh, uh, the Polish uh, uh, club had their family as well, but this is the PACC group. Perhaps you knew somebody who was in the picture. Uh, give us a call here, 774-501-1756. It's all it takes to let us know uh, mm -hmm. what you, what, growing up, what special memories do you have growing up in the uh, School Street area? Uh, speaking of the PACC, here's some of the, uh, the members <clears throat> of the board. Uh, this is going back probably, probably 20 years ago. Uh, Normie Butler is the, the, the lower left-hand corner. Uh, let me see a number of uh, David Lego in the far right uh, corner there. Uh, oh, a lot of people in there, familiar faces in the in the picture. If you want to call up and tell us who some of them are that you recognize, tell us a story. I'm sure there's a story behind every one person that's in there. Yeah, perhaps you've driven up at 218 School Street. In this particular building, is where the site of Santos Market uh, was. And if you wanted to, uh, to go in and years ago into the Santos Market, uh, that's where uh, look at all the different products that you could get. May, do you remember Santos Market? Does anyone who's watching here tonight remember Santos Market? And if so, what do you remember about it? Or what do you remember being told about it, I should say? Because some of you may be too young to uh, remember some of these uh, landmarks here up in the, uh, in the School Street area. We got plenty of time here, so uh, if we can just put the uh, phone number up again, 774-226-0, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, let me see, 774-501-1756. That's all it takes. We're live here tonight, January 2nd, 2013. We're talking about the Braga Square area, School Street, growing up on School Street. I remember people telling me about the uh, one of the... Uh, common sites growing up in the Braga uh, Square area was, I believe, in the afternoon when the uh, local farmer would bring his cows going from one pasture to another and it block all, all what traffic there was because they would uh, march all the cows right up the road, right through the square over uh, to, their, uh, to the next pasture. And that was something that uh, uh, people talked about. Also, uh, there was a lot of uh, people in the neighborhood who used to have stills in the neighborhood. Maybe you know about those. Uh, those Nobody likes to brag about those things, but uh, there were a lot of them, not just in the Bragg Square area, but down East Taunton as well. You're next in Old Time Taunton. How are you doing there, Charlie? Hi. Happy New Year. Um, I like the show. I'm loving it. But um, I grew up around School Street, uh, mm -hmm. and I, you know, it's so nostalgic seeing all these photos because mm -hmm. uh, I grew up in School Street. I remember going to St. Anne's, I mean, uh, St. Anthony's, okay. um, but um, do you remember what year that school, um, that church happened to be built by chance? The, the, uh, the St. Anthony's church was about, uh, the ground was broken in 1950 and it opened in July of 51. Okay, because I remember going there back in the 80s, mm -hmm. so uh, just nostalgic to see all that stuff, thank you. Okay, thank you, thanks for sharing that with us. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, that church has been there a while, but the the, par the parish uh, has been in existence since 1905. Uh, although they operated just where the uh, the school had been for many years in the basement, but they found out that the structure was not suitable to put the kind of uh, church edifice on top of it. So that's why they chose the site uh, two doors down, if you will, where the current building is, and and put a brand new uh, foundation in to support the current. St. Anthony's Church. Uh, but there was a building right, um, uh, it's no longer there. This is the only picture I could find of it, the blocks. Uh, now there's two, as I understand, uh, and perhaps any of you watching who know the difference, uh, because there's a, the blocks that were right at the corner as you're going up School Street and get to the uh, bakery and you look across the street to the right, that was one known as the blocks, but so was this building, it was apartment house uh, numerous families would live in this uh, when they'd arrive in the, in the neighborhood uh, and it was on the left as you're going up uh, near not too far from the Fuller School. Uh, I wanted to show this picture this was the last day and I cannot think of the gentleman's name right off the top of my head but it was the last day it was an ice cream uh, he was delivering ice cream by horse and wagon and I wanted to show you because the person uh, that's oh here it is Charles Gaffney and want to guess who that is? 
it's somebody everybody knows, that was Teddy Alexo. That's little Teddy Alexo who had uh, become the state representative. He was a t school teacher. Then he was a state representative. Uh, then he was state senator uh, for many years, a prominent attorney, uh, of course, as well. But that is, that is him there with his, I believe his sister is in the picture. I'm not sure if the other person is his brother. But Charles Gaffney, the ice cream dealer, he was there. This was his last day of operation. Perhaps you remember that. Also, the, this was the uh, Taunton Baker uh, Baking Company at 210 School Street, Ideal Bread in New Loaf. But they also sponsored a soccer team. And they, uh, in the 1930s, they were champion soccer players. Uh, perhaps you knew some of the people that are in the, in the picture here. Uh, uh, maybe your parents, grandparents uh, were among them, or at least uh, relatives of some sort. If you identify anybody, uh, just uh, give us a call. I'll gladly go back to that. If, if, if you start talking to somebody, and give somebody a call. Uh, there's another picture of the uh, championship team sponsored by the local, uh, the local baker from Braga Square area. Uh, but that was, uh, and soccer was not as popular as it is uh, today in the mainstream uh, community. Winning the cup for soccer in 1930. But uh, perhaps you recognize some of them. Ah, here it is, the Fuller School. Now the sign that was on the, above the door in here is actually in my house right now. My wife and I decided to put it up on the side of the wall. My wife's... Uh, uh, maiden name is Ferreira, and she, uh, uh, her, uh, she went to school at St. Anthony's School, but she's proud of her Portuguese heritage, and uh, so we put this up on, on the wall. Somebody called my house and told me that they had the, uh, the sign, and they delivered it. I'm figuring it's a small rectangular sign, but it's a very long sign, and it's now uh, in my family room at, the, uh, at where I live now. And this, the Fuller School, is actually named for Judge William Fuller, who is a, a judge of probate court locally here. Uh, but it was because the school originally was called the, the North School Street School until at such time as it was named after Judge Fuller. Perhaps you went to school there. Who was your favorite teacher? Uh, what were some of the uh, activities that took place here at the Fuller School? And this was 1929. Get the ladies musical. This is sponsored by the ladies uh, musical club. Uh, all the Dias, Deruda, Kudo, Mendes, uh, Foster, Abru, uh, Tixera, Agrella, Braga. Oh, all kinds of students in this picture. Perhaps there's a relative in that. And there's some of the boys in the. Uh, the guys who hung around the School Street area, uh, among the people that are there that I can recognize, in the lower right, it's, uh, I've been told that the person with the tie in the lower right is Lefty Enos, Ernie Lefty Enos, who grew up uh, there. His son is uh, Gil Enos, who's the budget director, not for Bob Noons, and for myself when I was mayor and uh, currently the budget director uh, under Mayor Hoy. Uh, so there's the, uh, some of the gang uh, uh, Perhaps you know some of them and want to let us know. How about Jerome Jigger Alves Variety Store on Winter Street at Braga Square? <clears throat> For those of you that aren't familiar where it was, it, if you went up to School Street, got right up to Braga Square in front of the bakery, you looked to the left and went up Winter Street. It would be right there on the left. It faced the, the open square, faced Floral Street. Uh, and I'm told that the person, the young lady wearing the, the hair, uh, the flower in her hair, is uh, May Parker, uh, John Parker's wife. Uh, and that is, uh, that's who I'm told that that is. But that was one of the popular stores in the, uh, in the neighborhood. Maybe you remember going to Jigga's Variety Store. But that square uh, didn't get a name, really, identifiable name, until uh, during the Korean War, the early 50s, when uh, a local fellow uh, by the name of Anthony Braga, uh, served in Korea and was killed in action in Korea. So here he is, Anthony Braga. He's not buried in Taunton. He's, uh, he's buried overseas, 
and I believe in Fr I believe in France is where he's uh, located. But correct me if I'm wrong. If anybody knows differently, I believe that's where he's located. And um, and he was killed shortly after he arrived uh, on the uh, in in Europe. But that's his family uh, unveiling the original plaque that was at the intersection of Floral Street, Winter Street, and School Street in that area. So that uh, unveiling the tablet that bears his name. So since that time, it's been called Bragger Square. Perhaps you were there that day when they did that? You want to let us know? I mentioned to you about the, the blocks. And this is if you're right uh, coming down uh, Winter Street, going towards, uh, say, Route 44. And that is the, the blocks in the background there. It's no longer there. Uh, that, that's been taken down, and that's where a lot of people that, that, that arrived in the in the village lived in there for one point or another. Perhaps you you did and want to tell us about it, or you know families who did. Uh, tell us about your experiences growing up in the village. Um, Mary's, uh, I believe this is in front of what was at one time called White's Front uh, White's Market. I believe White's Front Market. I think it was. But that's an older picture of that uh, at the time, but it's Candero and uh, Candera and Silva was the name of the place at the time. And uh, this is located up be on School Street, just up beyond the the square, and that was the St. Anthony's Club. Uh, and they, they this place where the uh, the Taunton Band used to practice at one time, among other places. But this is where it it uh, it practiced. I believe at one time it was called the Madeira Club as well, but it, it, I do know it was called St. Anthony's Club at one time. But this is the uh, postcard that I had found, of, and it was written in Portuguese uh, on it, but it was the band from Taunton, uh, made up of Portuguese uh, residents of Taunton. And this is the uh, members of the Taunton band, and I trying to locate in the picture which one's Jack Klonzevs. I did at one time know which one's which. I don't. Perhaps you know which one he is. I don't, I'm not sure it's the one to the immediate left, but it could be. But that's the Taunton City Band. I wanted to show this picture because the source of employment for many people that grew up in the, in, in the village was the uh, winter, what they called the Winter Street Brickyard. And this is uh, uh, Winter Street extended down all the way down to Route 44. Uh, but then portion of it was called Long Meadow Road. But this is right where Hot Sons ball field is, or the softball field. It was a brickyard. And uh, there were many people that actually worked in the, uh, uh, that worked here that lived in the village. But that's the brickyard. You can see the, uh, the stacks of bricks that uh, many of the youngsters would be employed to quote unquote flip the bricks to dry on one side and then you'd flip them over so they could dry evenly on the other side. That's why the drainage in that area is very, very poor because there was a lot of clay in that, that particular area. There it is. This is the Winter Street Brickyard. We had a lot of brickyards over the years, not just the one down on Hots, uh, down on Linden Street. What uh, everybody, when they say the brickyard, they're thinking Hart Street uh, and Linden Street. But we had brickyards all along Hart Street, up Linden Street, on uh, William Street, as well as uh, what we know now as Long Meadow Road or, Win uh, or Winter Street. Also, Tony Bonato's fill-in station on Washington Street. Uh, the building is still there. It's not an operating uh, gas station, but you had the Flying A uh, fill-in station, as they call it at the time. Uh, and uh, this was popular for the, some of the kids because they'd go and see the two puppies that were there. Uh, Zip and Speck were uh, two of the uh, Bernardo's puppies that were they're always there. For, so the kids would come by and, uh, to play with the pups. Perhaps you remember doing that? Give us a call here. We only got a few more minutes left. 774-501-1756. We're here live tonight. We're, uh, <coughs> we're going to be doing live programs. For the most part, with probably one exception in, um, in February, we're going to do live programs all the way up until uh, May of this year. Uh, we've, uh, some of the programs that we're going to be working on are, uh, are programs on uh, a sign of the times. We're going to be uh, doing one on uh, Through the Eyes of the Lopes uh, Sign Company, 
all the signs that he, uh, that he put on the buildings. Plus, we're going to do one on uh, uh, the 50s and 60s and 70s and so forth. You're next in Old Time Taunton. Hi, Charlie. Hi. Call him again. Uh, that block on School Street was next to uh, John Sampson's uh, store, right? At the store there. Okay. And the other one uh, across from the baker shop, which was called the Thomas Block. Right, that that's was, right. Uh, Jimmy James Thomas, right. uh, the apartment that is named after the Jimmy Thomas, his parents owned that. Uh, but that's correct. Uh, and they had a little store there. Yeah. Right. Right. That's right. I couldn't. I couldn't think of the name of that. What distinguished it from the other? Yeah. Well, a lot and, of families uh, that you grew up there. I remember I was there at the dedication of uh, Tony Bragg's uh, plaque there. You were. Oh. And we used to hang around at Chicken's Variety. He was a great, great guy. Oh yeah. Mr. Adams. Yeah. Yeah. Now you have any pictures of uh, Mr. Bob's ice cream truck? Uh, I, d I don't. I, I do know where there is one, but it was, wasn't a very good one. It wasn't very clear. Oh, yeah. But, uh, but I do remember uh, people talking about that. Yeah. Uh, I'll have to uh, uh, get a picture, a good quality picture of that in, uh, in short in a future episode. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See, it's, it's easy. Don't be shy. 774-501-1756. We have, uh, oh, probably about eight minutes left, uh, so uh, feel free to join us here. Duart's Barbershop, this was on Purchase Street. Uh, if you come from Broadway, for example, uh, and you're coming up Purchase Street and you cross Washington Street, as far as I understand, it would be right on the left, just a few doors, a few doors up. That was a popular uh, barbershop. There were a number of them in the area, um, yeah, but this was one of them at Duarts. Then you had Ven uh, Ventura's Market at 277 Washington Street. Frank Ventura's Market. Perhaps you remember uh, going there. Uh, this is the, uh, I had to include this. Uh, I think it was Mrs. Crotty who lived here on Washington Street opposite Floral Street. Uh, and it was, she had a reputation of having ladies there at the house th who liked to entertain the men of, uh, of the uh, community. And the reason I have the duck in the bottom left is that whenever she put, uh, she would put ducks in the window and that would let people know how many of the ladies were available. Uh, so I had to include that in and I'll just, uh, I won't go into details about it, but I think you can pretty much Guess what was going on there. You're next in Old Time Taunton. How you doing, Charlie? Happy New Year to you. Same to you. Uh, bringing back some great memories from the old days, because I grew up in that area. Uh -huh. And uh, I wanted to pick out a couple of things that I noticed. Sure. Uh, Bernard's uh, service station, that's where I used to go fill up my uh, bike tires down there. Uh -huh. Great memories. Uh, do you remember the pups they had there, Zip and Spec? No, no, like no, I don't remember time? that. I'm talking like in the 80s, so I don't oh. know what year that was. Oh, okay, yeah, that would be a little bit before that, correct. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. There was and, and also, you had Santos Variety uh, Store there. That used that also turned into uh, Garcia's Barbershop. I used to get a the haircut there when I was a kid all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, me and Garcia used to cut hair there. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. And, and the other thing I want to mention is the uh, St. Anthony's, St. Anthony's Parish. It's a great parish, and... It's too bad that school burnt down because that's where they used to have all the uh, costumes and all the props for all the processions they used to do. Uh -huh. And I used to be big back then. And after that burnt down, it all went with it. And uh, they go the, the feasts and the processions they used to do. It's too bad. Yeah, it, it, it is uh, because uh, that whole area comes alive in the summer. But you have uh, the PACC might have their f uh, festa going on. And then you also have one over at Ward 5. And sometimes on the same weekend, which made it a madhouse, uh, you think it, maybe they'd do it on different weekends, so the big crowd that would go uh, would uh, patronize the one at the PACC, and then the next weekend could patronize the other one, but they were running back and forth. Exactly. exactly. And I think in the last few years, they actually tried to solve that, because they still do the feast at the Ward 5 and the PACC, and I yeah. think they, they were talking about that, doing them different now on different weekends. And that, that's what, you know, there's so, it's such a rich history the Portuguese families have here, and what we've tried to do, especially when I was the mayor, we, we uh, uh, developed a sister city relationship with uh, a place in uh, uh, Lagoa, uh, in San Miguel, in the Azores. Yeah. And when I went over there 
for our official visit to sign those papers. We, we're in a procession, and I'm noticing people from Taunton lined along the side of the road that, that go back there uh, every year, especially in August when they have the national holiday there. Uh, and uh, so they're, they're very proud of their, where they came from in that, that area. And I know my wife's family uh, originated in Tosira uh, when they came to this, uh, to this country. Uh, so that's why I proudly have uh, the sign for the fullest school in my house. Yep, yep. Okay. Well, it's great, Charlie, what you're doing. Keep it up, buddy. We watch you every week. Thanks great. very much. Great. Thank you. Bye. Uh, we got a f there's just a few minutes left here. Uh, uh, some of the famous people from uh, the School Street area, and I'm picking out a selected amount. I mean, there's a lot more than here, but Joy Emerald is like royalty from there. Uh, the former mayor of, of Taunton back in the... Uh, uh, from let me see, he was there from uh, 78, 79, 80, and 81. Uh, then later on, the registrar of deeds, and this is a picture of him with the council that he uh, that he served with. Uh, a very uh, well-respected gentleman in the in the area and considered like royalty uh, in the village. Perhaps you know others. I'm going to show you some others soon, right after we take this call. You're next in Old Time Taunton. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Uh Hey, Mr. Crowley. Hi. Uh, I was just wondering, is your book still available, uh, the Just Yesterday? The Just Yesterday book, uh, they're out of print, uh, although uh, occasionally one will uh, come available on either eBay or on Amazon.com. There is one available at Amazon.com now, but it's like $120. Uh, but I, I do have a, another pictorial book. Uh, that I did it, uh, not, uh, the Just Yesterday was done by Dr. Hanner and myself. The one in 2004 I did, uh, and it was, it is available on Amazon.com for like $15. It's less than what it was originally uh, sold for. Those are available because the, the actual printer, which out in the West Coast, uh, produces them as needed. So you can, get, uh, you can get those. It's filled with pictures all over the, all over the city. It's a pictorial history as well. That came out in 04. The Just Yesterday book came out in uh, 1989. And, and what's the name of the new one? Uh, the new one is just A Pictorial History of Taunton. Uh, and it's, uh, uh, I think it's pediment printing. But if you go to Amazon.com and, uh, and, and type in Taunton and Crowley, it'll pop up. Okay? All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. I'm gonna, we only get a couple minutes left, so I'm going to quickly go through some of the other uh, famous people from uh, the village area. James Gallego uh, is former city councilor and a uh, longtime director of the Taunton Retirement Board. Teddy Alexo, uh, who was mayor of the city of Taun, uh, Taunton, along with being state representative and state, state senator, and that's him with the city council. Frank Rico, uh, longtime state representative. The city Lake Rico in East Taunton is named for him. Uh, Elena Gay, Elena Manise, she grew up in the, in, the, uh, in the area and she was the longtime public relations person for Reed and Barton. Emma Andrade, uh, everybody knows Emma. She was on every board uh, in, in the city, just a, a very, very sweet person. Uh, and Dr. Noons, uh, he, uh, he uh, was very, very popular with those families. So, okay. But, Join us next week on another edition of Old Time Taunton. I'm Charlie Crowley, and uh, we, we do this live every week. So join us again next week for another edition of Old Time Taunton. Thank you, and good night.